Pfizer says its lower-dose coronavirus vaccine is safe and effective in kids aged 5 to 11. A top company official says they, quote, really hit the sweet spot. The next step is to get their data to the FDA for emergency use authorization. Pfizer's announcement comes amid rising pediatric cases. Kids now account for more than a quarter of new infections in the U.S., with nearly 226,000 new cases reported last week alone. Mola Lenghi leads off our coverage in New York City. Tonight, there's a dose of good news from Pfizer. Five to 11 year olds are one step closer to getting vaccinated. Results from a recent clinical trial showed they had strong immune responses to the COVID vaccine with minimal side effects. We have a vaccine dose that is well tolerated, safe, and generates an antibody response that's likely to protect against COVID-19. What's next? Where do we go from here? The, the next step is to assemble all this information and submit it uh, to the FDA by the end of this month. The proposed child shot would be a third of the dose approved for anyone 12 and up. We as a family decided to try to move forward. Dr. Richard Chung enrolled his two sons in Pfizer vaccine trials. If they wanted to rush it, they could have, but this shows that that rigor uh, is not lacking. Joshua is eight. He didn't know whether he received the vaccine or a placebo. I was really excited to get myself protected from the from coronavirus. The need for a vaccine for young people is urgent. Weekly new COVID cases in children have jumped by more than 150 percent in the last month as the U.S. still struggles to contain the pandemic. Despite a national average of nearly 2,000 COVID deaths a day, the Biden administration today announced it'll lift travel restrictions on fully vaccinated tourists from overseas beginning in November. Dr. Scott Gottlieb is a former FDA commissioner and sits on Pfizer's board of directors. At this point, um, there's so much virus around the world, I'm not sure what we're keeping out. Also today, protocols are being shifted in New York City public schools. Random testing of unvaccinated students will be performed weekly instead of twice a month. And beginning next week, unvaccinated students exposed to a positive case will no longer have to quarantine if they were masked and socially distant. This allows us to strike the balance of both keeping kids safe while ensuring that, um, that kids remain in school uh, when it is safe for them to do so. Well, it's unlikely children under five will be eligible for any sort of vaccine before the end of the year. But Pfizer's Dr. Gruber told us today, ultimately, boosters will likely be needed for children, but there is no timetable on those shots, Elaine. Mola Lenny, thank you. For more, I want to bring in Dr. Shika Jane. She is an assistant professor of medicine at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Dr. Jane, welcome. As we just heard, Pfizer says its coronavirus vaccine is safe and effective in kids ages 5 to 11. How significant is this? I think this is really significant, Elaine, especially for people like me who have children who fall into that age group. I think we really need to focus on getting our kids vaccinated. We've got the school year going on right now. We've got a lot of people mingling around and about, and our kids are ready to get vaccinated, and we want to keep them in schools. And to do that, we need to start rolling out these vaccines as soon as we're able to. So, doctor, this is just company data. So what needs to happen before we can actually vaccinate this particular age group? So the first thing that needs to happen is Pfizer is going to need to submit to the FDA a request to expand the emergency use authorization to children 5 to 11. Then after that, the FDA is going to have to create an amendment and actually approve this emergency use authorization. Then that will go to the CDC where they will decide how and when this rollout will happen and if, uh, if it's safe to do so with the data that Pfizer has presented to the FDA. And then after that, we will have a rollout and the rollout for kids may be very different than it was for the initial rollout we saw for adults. It's likely we'll see these types of shots happening um, in doctor's offices and in other community events. And the hope is that because we've had practice now rolling it out with the adults, hopefully we'll be a very successful and equitable rollout as we roll it out to our children. Yeah, this process has taken longer than it took to approve the vaccine for adults and adolescents. As we await a vaccine for kids even younger than age five, remind us, doctor, why longer trials are crucial. 
So longer trials are really important both for kids and adults because kids do respond differently to medications and to vaccines. We need to make sure that the dosing we're giving is giving an appropriate and robust immune response to children without causing uh, side effects that are significant. And what they found with the dosing, as was described by one of your guests earlier, the dosing is one third of the dose for the adult, uh, the adult dose of the vaccine is the size and the amount of the dose that's uh, being dosed for children who are five to 11. So we need to make sure that the studies that we're doing are effective and showing an effective immune response, but are doing so without causing significant side effects, which is what these studies so far seem to have been showing. Yeah, doctor, in your opinion, can parents be confident in this vaccine? Is it something you would recommend? Mm -hmm. I absolutely recommend it. My seven-year-old is ready to roll up her sleeve. She's been asking me since day one when she can get her vaccine. I think it's important to remember mm. that every single necessary safety step has been followed for this vaccine. People talk about how everything has been rolled out so quickly. I want to remind people that this type of research and technology has been around for a long time. It's just the first time we've actually found a virus that it works so effectively against. So parents should absolutely not be concerned. This was done with all of the rigor that we would expect from our FDA, from the CDC. And this is a very safe vaccine to roll out to children. And I would highly recommend all parents, as soon as you can get your children vaccinated, to get them vaccinated. Meanwhile, the head of the NIH predicts the FDA will expand its booster shot recommendation in the coming weeks. Now, last Friday, the agency recommended a third dose for certain at-risk populations, but not for the general public. Doctor, what's your take on this? Do you expect the guidance to change soon as well? I think the guidance will likely change. How soon, I don't know. I want to remind people also that when we talk about a third shot for those people who are older or immunocompromised, some people are actually calling it just the third shot in the full series of the vaccine for that population. Because many times that group mm. of people does not actually create as robust of an immune response. So it's important to remember that it's not really a booster for that population. It's probably just a third shot that they likely needed. Now, for everyone else, while while we are seeing some waning immunity after the second dose, eight months later, there is still a very good protective effect of the vaccines that we're seeing in all of those people who aren't in those high-risk groups. So I do think boosters will be necessary, but I think we need to get some more information and some more data. We are getting information from Israel and other countries where we're seeing how effective boosters are and what they can be um, useful for when we talk about controlling the spread of the virus. So I imagine Imagine we will see boosters in the near future. But right now, again, I encourage people, don't run out and get a booster if you're not in that category just yet. Wait for the data, wait for the information. And then once we have a rollout planned for boosters, then I would recommend you absolutely go out and get one. Doctor, you bring up a really good point. I wonder, is it even correct? I guess it depends, the, is it gonna be your answer, but is it even correct to call them boosters? Because as you point out, for some categories of our population, people in, with certain conditions, the first two doses of a vaccine may have had no effect at all. And so that third dose would not in fact be a booster, but would be similar to what one might get protectively after just one dose. Is that what I'm hearing? Am I hearing that correctly, doctor? Exactly. For example, I'm an oncologist and I see cancer patients and I tell many of my cancer patients, this isn't actually a booster for you. This is actually the third shot that you likely needed to pro provide yourself with as much immunity as somebody who has a fully functional immune system. So for certain patients mm -hmm. and for certain people, it's not actually a booster. It's really just the third shot that you would need to complete the series. Now, for people with a really good, robust immune system, it is likely we will need boosters and and those boosters could be for a variety of reasons. They could be because of waning immunity, or they could be because we're seeing new variants that come down the line. So just like the flu shot, you need a flu shot every year. It is possible that we will see that with COVID-19 as we move forward, but we'll need to see what the data shows, what the research shows, and see what the recommendations are coming down the pipeline in the next few months. Some really good guidance, Dr. Shika Jane. Doctor, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Thanks for having me, Elaine.